can cap the back of the knife here or wrap the thumb. What's going to dictate this is the design of the knife. If there's something that's going to keep your hand from sliding onto the blade, if you impact something hard like bone, uh, you can wrap the thumb. If there isn't anything that's going to prevent your hand from sliding up, cap the back of the knife like this. Now, stance work, right leg out front, roughly square to the target. I raise the heel of my back foot. Uh, it's important to keep the right foot out front. I'm going to be going through a lot of things here today. If you uh, train other systems, they do it a different way. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just showing you the way we do it and giving you the reasoning behind why we do it. So, right leg out front, left leg in the back, heel raised slightly, squares, uh, shoulders roughly squared to the target. The reason why we want to keep the right leg out front is if I put my left leg out front and draw my knife hand back, the opponent flanks to my left. Now I have to reposition to engage him. It's hard if he steps this way for me to reach across and stab him. My right leg's out front, my knife is out front here. He steps this way, I can engage him. He steps this way, I can engage him without having to reposition. Conversely, if I'm sparring, sometimes I'll attack the opponent's right leg if they have it out front just so they'll step back. Then I'll flank to their left to use that same principle against them. So, we're going to go over the basic eye attacks to start with. The reason why I like attacking the face uh, initially uh, on entries is when we started training uh, various groups, specifically in Mexico, that were going out and using this in the field, what we found was, generally speaking, most people didn't realize they were stabbed until the altercation was over. And if you've ever done a seminar with me, you've probably seen me ask this question. I ask it at almost every seminar I do. Has anyone here been stabbed before? The answer is, in any group, there's usually one or two who say yes. Next thing I ask is, did you realize it during the altercation? The vast majority of the time, the answer is no. The rare instance where they did realize it, it's not because they felt it, it was because they saw blood. Um, usually, someone gets stabbed after the altercation is over, someone tells them they're bleeding, they lift up their shirt, realize they got stuck. The exception to that is attacks to the eyes. When you hit someone in the eye, they immediately, usually, will drop, or at least give you a dramatic reaction or fall to the ground. We've even had instances where someone missed the eye shot but just hit the bone around the eye, and that was enough to impede them and have them hit the ground. So what I like to do, usually, is attack the eyes on the way in. Even though it's a less lethal target, I don't like to say non-lethal, because anytime you're using a knife, there's always the chance that you're going to nick an artery on the opponent, and it'll still be lethal. So we'll call it a less lethal target. But that's why I like to hit the eye. So the first entry we're going to do from this grip is an eye spike. We're just going to start here, put the point of the knife roughly in, uh, in line with the center of their vision, and just shoot straight in. So we're putting the knife in the center line of the opponent's vision because that way it's harder for him to perceive motion. Uh, he doesn't process it as quickly as he does if it's coming from the outside and his peripher uh, peripheral vision sees it coming. So if it's in line with his eye, it's very easy to slip this in before he can react to it. The drawback to this particular entry is it has to be accurate. Um, we're going to go through uh, five different entries here. Realistically, you're going to pick one or two you like, make those your base, and really drill those. So again, knife. Center of the opponent's vision, chamber it up, elbow tucked in tight to guard the ribs, shoot it out, bring it back. Just like in boxing, it's important that the knife comes back just as fast as it goes out. Sometimes people have a habit of stabbing and leaving this in the target, uh, and then retracting it slowly. Every second the knife's away from your body, your arm's extended, those are seconds that you're exposed. So it shoots out fast, comes back fast. Even when drilling this slow, try not to let it linger in the target. Have it touch the target, come right back. Not moving out, bring it back. Let's do 10 of these. One, two. One, two. Three. Four. Five. You'll notice I'm just shuffling in it a little bit. The shuffle is going to be dictated by range. If I don't need to shuffle to hit my target, I won't. Six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now let's get ten of these in fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So like I said, the advantage of this one is it's very hard for him to see it coming. The disadvantage is you have to be fairly accurate with it. The next one we're going to work is a horizontal flick. In this motion, the palm faces the opponent. You're going to rake the tip of the knife across the eyeball end with the palm facing you. For those of you who've done Filipino martial arts, the motion is the same as an abanico, only we're attacking with the bottom of the hand rather than the stick out here. So the idea with this is we're not trying to do tremendous damage to the opponent's eye. We're only trying to scrape the tip of the blade across the eye here just to give a quick snap reaction. Don't worry about power at all. You don't need to make this a big sweeping motion with your arm. Just flick it very quickly here. Here. So palm faces the opponent. Turn palm faces you. Here. So let's do 10 of those slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's get five fast now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have the eye spike and the horizontal flick. So the advantage of the horizontal flick is it gives you a little bit wider motion, but it's still an economical move. The disadvantage is the range has to be pretty accurate so that you're not hitting with the flat of the blade or missing the target. Next one we're going to do is an eye pluck. This time we're going to keep the palm up, move into the eye here, and retract the elbow back to the ribs. Don't worry about keeping track of all these right now. I'm just presenting options for you. We'll revisit these again as we go. So palms up, we're hitting the eye, elbow comes back to the ribs. This is important. If you're just trying to swipe here and turning the blade back to you, the opponent advances, they can drive the blade into you. So here, keep the point angled towards the opponent, draw the elbow back, point stays oriented towards the opponent the whole time. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Let's do five fast now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, next one, face edge. Face edge, we're going to drag the tip of the knife down the opponent's face and hook to the outside. This one is nice because you don't have to have good accuracy. You're just slicing all the way down the face. The drawback to this one is it's a little bit bigger motion, so the blade's going to be in place slightly longer. Uh, when your adrenaline's flowing, your limbs are real heavy, your heart's pounding, your heart's pounding, your peripheral vision narrows, and your fine motor skills are gone. This one's nice because it simulates a hammer fist type motion, so it's very easy just to fall back into this. So we're going to start here, try and come a little bit above the opponent's eyebrow. Rip down, hook to the outside here. One. Slow that down. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good. So let's get five in fast now. One. You'll notice the hook ending out here 
This is so I can set up to strike from the outside with follow-up shots. I don't want to bring this straight down because if the opponent advances into me, even though he'll run into my knife and it'll be in his body, he could trap my knife between me and him and still attack me with his weapon while he's bleeding out. So make sure you hook this to the outside so your blade's in play. That way if he does move in here, you can still be attacking and still be doing damage with the weapon. So let's do five fast now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. So, so far, we've done the eye spike. Center line vision, moving straight in, hitting the eye, retracting back. Horizontal flick, like an abanico. Palm faces the opponent, keeping the arm roughly still, not swiping with the arm, just with the wrist breaking across the eye here. Eye pluck, moving in here, attacking the eye, retracting back. Base edge, moving in, down, hooking to the outside. Last one we're going to work, parting gift. Usually this one goes to the opponent's right eye. But if I'm angled over here, sometimes if I move to the opponent's left, I'll hit this on my way out, hence the name parting gift. Steve LeClaire, one of my first students, the first uh, instructor, uh, Libre Ever certified, actually created this, created and named this technique. He used to like to do this in exchanges on the way out. He would hook the eye here to cover his escape on the way out. For now though, we're gonna, just going to work it to the right eye. So this one, the palms down, coming across the eye, retracting the elbow, back to the ribs. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's do five fast now. One, two, three, four, five. You might notice me slapping my shoulder here. It's a question I get asked about a lot. So a few reasons I do this. The primary reason is this helps stop the forward momentum and snap my arm back faster. So my arm's in play less amount of time. It just helps me retract faster. Also creates an auditory distraction and it helps cover my vitals as I'm moving here. I'm kind of covering up my heart, my lungs, tucking my chin a little bit to protect my throat. That's just incidental. The main reason is to help with the retraction. So to review all five of these now, we're going to do five of each. Eye spike, just coming straight in here. One, two, three, four, five. Horizontal flick. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, eye pluck. One, Two, bring the elbow back to the ribs. Three, four, five. Face edge, coming up high, hooking to the outside, reverse J motion. One, two, three, four, five. Parting gift, palm down, attacking the eye. Retracting the elbow, back to the ribs here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So those are the five basic ways to attack the face in this grip. I think it's important to know how to use a knife in all grips, any way it might end up in your hand. Given the choice, this is the one I prefer. Some combatives instructors uh, disagree with this. They have their reasons. The reason why I prefer this grip is because this hammer fisting motion is a very instinctual sort of way to fight. If you look at the way small children fight before they actually start to witness fights as they grow older, you'll see they slam each other with hammer fists. Primates do the same thing. As we get older, particularly males, when they start fighting as boys, we start to see how to throw punches. Untrained males will start hooking punches, latching on, hitting here. 
train males to tighten up their punches, use more boxing type punches. But the, the primal way we fight is using the hammer fist. So this motion here, moving in here, it simulates that hammer fist type motion. So when you're highly stressed, it's an easy motion to fall back on. Our arms naturally want to swing in this motion. So when we're in a side grip, which is what we call this, or point down edge in grip, we're using this motion here. And the forward grip usually will bring down here and then attack the body this way because of the way the arm swings. So because our arm swings this way, it's natural to fight with a knife here and here. So now we're going to start putting our left hand into play. So pick any of these you like. I spike, horizontal flick, face etch, eye pluck, parting gift. Doesn't matter, any of them. If you're indecisive, keep it simple. Just use an eye spike. That one's my favorite. So we're going to hit the eye spike, follow up with the palm here. Make sure you're hitting with the base of the palm, the bony part. Any solid bony structure on the face is fine. If you're a little bit smaller, you can come into the jaw, and smash the nose here, the cheek, or the forehead. I'm a bit taller at six foot. I like hitting the forehead. Uh, it can create a, a knockdown if you hit it hard enough. But the other reason I like hitting this is it pops the chin up, exposes the throat, so I can press the attack from the transitioning from the eye to the throat here. So we're just gonna pick any attack you want to use here and then follow up with the palm. For our purposes right now, work on your placement if you have a bob dummy. Think about where you're actually striking and analyze it. But just like the knife, when you do this full speed, you need to retract this hand just as fast as it goes out. Uh, sometimes I see people working the Libre material online, they tend to want to hold this out here. That's exposing all these vitals here, keeping your arm in play, giving them something to grab onto. Make sure you're popping with this. But for now, just take a look at where your hand is if you have a bob dummy. Make sure you're hitting a target accurately. So attacking the eye, popping the face here. One, two. One, two. One, two. Let's get 15 of these in. One. Two, three, four, five. Mix it up if you want. Horizontal flick. Six. Eye pluck. Seven. Base edge. Eight. Parting gift. Nine. Eye spike. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Good. So now let's do 10 full speed. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in the shot here as I'm doing this. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now let's follow up. We're going to transition into a throat pluck here. So the same eye pluck motion we did, we're going to do the same motion to the throat. So let's work that, isolate that motion, work it a few times. Just like going to the eye, hit here, retract the elbow to the ribs. Pluck the throat open. Come, be, come in at or behind the carotid artery. Rip it open. Make sure you're not orienting the blade towards yourself or swiping through with the arm. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 
14. 15. Good. Make it a few of those in isolation slow. Let's do five. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Good. So now we're going to put this together. Use any eye attack you want. One. Palm. Knock the opponent's head up. Expose this artery. Then pluck it open here. One. Two. Three. We're going to do ten. One, two, three. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. So now, five full speed. One, two, three, four, five. So now, the next way we can use our left hand is rather than striking the face. We can preemptively check the opponent's right shoulder if he has a weapon. Especially if you're in a position where the opponent is ready to engage. If you get the drop on him and get the shot in first, you might eat a shot while you're landing the secondary. So here, pop the opponent's shoulder just to knock his weapon away from you, inhibit that attack. Then we're going to press from there. So right now let's just do these first two motions. So any eye attack you want, one. Pop the right shoulder. One, two. One, two. Ten of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Good. Now five, full speed. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. So the first follow-up we're going to do is going straight back to that throw plug. We're going to assume in this instance we hit the eye, maybe his head snapped back, or maybe I just have enough room to reach this artery here. So we're attacking the eye, preemptively checking his right shoulder to inhibit any counter, then going into the throat. One, two, three. Do ten slow. One, two, three. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So now five full speed. One, two, three, four, five. So now the next one we're going to work. We're going to assume when we hit his eye, maybe he recoiled and brought his chin down, which isn't uncommon at all, or he brought his hands up to his face, and I don't have a clear line to this throat target. This instance, moving in, preemptively checking this shoulder, his hands come up. When his hands come up, that leaves his side open. So we're going to do what's called blindsiding. We're hitting the left eye, checking. So because I've blinded him on this side, I'm going to step into that blind spot I've created now, to press my attack. In this instance, we're going to press the attack going into the lungs. The lung puncture, flanking here, widening my base. Never cross-stepping and moving here. Front foot moves, back leg drags. That way, if I collide with someone, my base is widened and not narrow where it's going to compromise my balance. So, we're just going to isolate this lung puncture now. Here, 
One, two, turn the blade horizontal, go between the ribs, into the lung here. If you hit a lung, or if you hit a rib, I'm sorry, it's not the worst thing in the world. Generally, what's going to happen, you're just going to glance That's off of it, still go into the target. If you hit it dead on, you might end up breaking it. If for some reason you hit this and you don't get through, just double up on it and hit it again. It's very rare that happens. So now, let's do 15 of these slow. Flanking, widening the base. One, two, turn the blade horizontal, run it parallel to the ground, move into the lung here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, so now we're going to put this all together. Attack the eye, any attack you want. Eye spike, horizontal flick, eye pluck, base edge, parting gift. Generally, we wouldn't be using the parting gift in this application, because usually we're going to step to the right when we use that as an entry. But you could take this here on your way over this way, on the right eye. So, attack the eye, one, preemptively check the shoulder, flank into his blind spot, turn the blade horizontal, I'm also bringing this arm back, putting it between me and the opponent as I throw this. That way if he moves into me, I can brace off of him and press my attack. So one, two, three. Ten of these. One, two, three. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, five, full speed. Don't neglect the footwork as you do this. So make sure that after these shots, you're flanking and getting off to the side. So you have a good angle to press this attack. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So recapping what we've covered today. We have the eye spike. Chambering here, putting the point of the knife in line with the opponent's center line vision, stabbing the eye. Horizontal flick. Palm facing here, scraping the eye, turning it back to you. Throw pluck. Palm up, hitting the eye, retracting keeping the point of the blade oriented towards the opponent. Base edge, whipping down the face, hooking to the outside. Parting gift, palms down, hitting the eye, ripping it back this way. Throat pluck, hitting the artery here, bring it back, same as the eye pluck. Lung puncture, flanking, turning the blade horizontal, parallel to the ground, going between the ribs, into the lung here. Left hand can hit the face here, or preemptively check the opponent's right arm if he's armed and ready to engage you. Now, I have no idea if you guys have seen all this right now, because my comments froze before we started. Hopefully I didn't just sit here talking to you guys for the last 30 minutes with no one watching. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, you want to do more, uh, let me know. I'm going to do a quick post after this. Comment in the thread on that if you enjoyed this and you want to see me do more. If not, uh, cool too. Thanks for joining in, everyone.